Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and we're currently hovering above our planet Earth on the dark side of the planet, but something doesn't seem right. What is it? Hmm. It seems like we're actually in the far far future, possibly 5.4 billion years from now, when our sun has become a red giant. In today's video you're going to discover what all of this looks like in the future, and what will become of our beautiful planet when the sun decides to swallow the other two planets, Mercury and Venus. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So we're going to need to start our adventure on the dark side of our planet because in a few seconds I'm going to move away and you're going to be blinded by the light behind our planet. This right here is the sun as the red giant that is going to become in approximately 5.4 billion years. It is going to be tremendously large, it's going to be tremendously bright, and it's very likely going to scorch our planet into crispiness. Let's actually come to our planet from the uh, sunny side and see um, what it actually looks like. You're going to be pleasantly surprised at it. the uh, the temperature here right now is a pleasant 3,300 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm pretty sure that most elements that we have on our planet right now will probably melt and become liquid molten components. Now, this right here is what our Earth may actually look like. Something like 5.2 uh, to 5.4 billion years from now, but it's still not entirely certain because all of this is still a speculation. Now we know for a fact that our sun is going to one day run out of hydrogen, and when that happens, what's going to basically happen to the sun is that it's going to start contracting and then reach a point where the hydrogen will disappear and turn into helium. And then the helium will start burning and expand our sun to the point where it's going to become extremely large. Extremely large, but not so bright. It's going to be a red giant. Now, before we talk about that, let's actually just land on our planet Earth in the future and just kind of fly through it. See if we can maybe not die and not be blinded completely by these ridiculously bright environments here. So this is kind of what you might see if you were to stand on the planet in the future and basically here all oh, everything is lava the floor is lava no not just the floor everything is lava but this is the beauty of our sun in the sky five billion years from now now some scientists think that maybe just maybe the sun will actually swallow earth as well but the majority today speculate that our, our Earth will very likely stay, but it's going to be right on the edge of the sun, so it's very likely it's going to be super hot here and nothing will actually survive. This will be a, an uninhabited, scorched planet with basically nothing on it. But luckily for our species and possibly other life that might still be around, the um, if I actually escape from here for a second, the actual um, habitable zone of our star will then expand further down the road. As a matter of fact, and this is how beautiful all of this looks now, as a matter of fact, the habitable zone for our red giant star is now just a bit past, past the Kuiper's belt. It's at about 50 astronomical units to about 70 astronomical units. Meaning that, you know, um, dwarf planets like Pluto might actually become our new home. Or possibly some other objects, like for example, the planet that we're still trying to find, Planet 9 which might be out there somewhere and might actually become habitable in the future, but maybe not. Now, what we're going to do in this simulation, except for, of course, looking at this beauty, is we're going to briefly talk about other features and other facts about the future of our sun. Now, in Space Engine, you can actually modify quite a lot of things, so I'm going to show you uh, what our sun will look like right before it actually... Uh, loses all of this stuff and becomes a white dwarf as well. So there's actually going to be a period when it's going to run out of helium and it's going to have no helium left either. It's going to contract once again and then have what's known as a helium explosion, which will then create a planetary nebula and leave behind a white dwarf. So we're going to simulate this in a second. But before that, look at all these bright objects here. Can you guess what they are? What are these? illuminated objects everywhere in space. 
Hmm, I wonder if these are asteroids in the asteroid belt. Every single one of them is on fire. Every single one of them is really, really hot. And most of these asteroids, if they actually contain any water whatsoever, they will very likely basically evaporate. Some of them will turn into comets like this one right here. This is, I believe, oh, I actually don't even know that one. P2010, an unknown asteroid. And just to make this even more beautiful, let's actually accelerate time so you can observe this in a little bit faster speed because all of this will start moving around and create this very beautiful theater around our beautiful sun. Look at this beauty. So the uh, solar radiation is being expanded and the sun is actually losing quite a lot of mass right now. As a matter of fact, it's losing about 8% of mass of Earth per year, which is a ridiculous amount, much, much higher than it is right now. And so by the time that it reaches the stage, it's, uh, it's only going to be about 67% of its current mass. It's going to be much, much lighter. And if the edge of the sun ever reaches our planet Earth, unfortunately, the gas from the star will very likely make our planet slow down and then essentially collide with the red giant sun. But it might happen, it might not. Earth might actually survive and reach the point where it's going to actually live through the white dwarf stage as well. And actually, maybe, just maybe, we'll stay in our solar system forever. Now, let's actually take a look at some of the other planets here, specifically Jupiter. This is Jupiter right here. You can see that it's also very, very bright and its temperature is also very, very hot. As a matter of fact, just as hot as our own planet Earth. And so there is Jupiter with, it, with its four Galilean moons that is kind of barely visible because it's so bright. So maybe I'll just have to kind of come from this side. Yeah, that's not really helping either. Jupiter is so bright that you can't even see anything at all. Well, yeah, that's probably the best we'll get. And let's just for fun also take a look at Saturn and a few other planets just to see what they actually look like. And so there is Saturn. You can see the satellites are coming into view as well. And there it is. Also, once again, very, very bright, very, very hot and nevertheless, very, very, very beautiful as well. And every single bright spot here is once again a satellite of uh, Saturn. A satellite of this beautiful gas giant. So let's actually maybe take a brief look at its rings as well because they have become much more beautiful than they used to be. And this is actually what it might look like if you were to look at this beautiful red giant sun with the Saturn in front. And this is actually quite a spectacular view that you don't see very often. And there is actually, if you accelerate time, it looks absolutely marvelous, absolutely gorgeous. Very, very beautiful. And what I wanted to look at here is actually Titan. This is my favorite moon in the entire solar system. And so I wanted to see what my beautiful Titan has become. So there it is. It's the biggest uh, moon of Saturn and it's the second biggest moon in our solar system. It's just a little bit um, less massive than Mercury, but it's pretty much bigger than Mercury in size. And the temperature here is just a little bit chillier. It's 31 degrees Celsius, 3100 degrees Celsius. Um, but it looks just as hot as everything else. And the last two planets we'll take a look at are Neptune and Uranus, just because I actually wanted to see what they've become as well. And there comes Uranus, the seventh planet from the sun. And also a nice giant that is a little bit chillier, but still very, very hot. 2000 degrees Celsius. Looks nothing like it looks right now. And it looks completely different from what I, what I actually imagined it would look like. And that's the sun in the back there being ridiculously bright. And uh, Neptune is going to be one of the last objects. Quite far away, but still quite hot with 1600 degrees Celsius um, on the surface. And there it comes into view. There comes the be beautiful Neptune. Oh, you can kind of see the actual uh, um, one of the spots of Neptune's, which is a huge storm that's visible right there. All right. Well, that's interesting. Now, let's actually maybe take a look at one more uh, or two more objects. Specifically, I wanted to take a look at Pluto and uh, maybe Sedna. And the situation on Pluto is actually a little bit better. It's 56 degrees Celsius here, 
looks kind of nice and warm-ish, but unfortunately, because Pluto is basically made up of mostly ice, it's very likely going to melt and become a liquid planet, a liquid world. So even though it's called warm ice world, technically it should not be that. And this is actually what the sun looks like from this distance as a red giant. And this is if you were to put uh, Pluto right in front of it. And maybe the last one on the list is going to be, well, let's pick between Ares and Sedna. And I think Sedna is actually a little bit more interesting because it's a little bit farther away. Okay, it says Sedna is a little bit too cold. How about Ares? Yep, Ares is also very cold. So let's just maybe go to one of them. Specifically here, we're going to go to Sedna just because that's the one I wanted to visit originally. And here the temperature is minus 160 degrees Celsius. So there's got to be at least one object somewhere in between these two. Uh, between Pluto and Sedna, that's going to be maybe a little bit warmer. But Sedna being one of the farthest objects we actually know, would be a very good destination for us to visit just to see what red giant sun would look like from this particular distance. And look at that. Looks very bright, very beautiful, very, very orangey red. Um, and the surface of Sedna will be illuminated by all these beautiful colors. And to my surprise, I was actually able to find uh, one object that seems to have a relatively comfortable 14 degrees Celsius temperature. This is another object in the Kuiper's Belt, and this is the famous asteroid or dwarf planet known as Quawar. We've talked about this object previously, and the interesting thing about it is that it spins really, really fast. And so because of that spin, it actually has a kind of a pancake-like shape that you can kind of see right here. And it also has a moon by the name of um, Waywat. And maybe this is a place that we might be able to visit one day and kind of colonize. But chances are not very likely. Chances are that by the time that the sun becomes a red giant, we'll either perish completely because, you know, we haven't really been on our planet Earth that long anyway. Or we might become an extrasolar race traveling across the galaxy, visiting other planets that are much, much more comfortable than this pancake right here. And anyway, let's go back to our Earth for a second. So we're going to escape our planet Earth now and witness the last moments before our sun expands its shell and becomes a white dwarf. So here comes this transformation as it turns into what's known as a white dwarf and basically throws all of this out and creates a planetary nebula. So there is the beauty of our sun as a red giant, losing all of its outer shell and creating a, uh, a white dwarf. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I kind of wanted to help you visualize what's going to happen to our sun when it's a red giant and when it transforms into a white dwarf. And maybe in one of the future videos, we'll explore this in some other detail using another simulation. Anyway. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't and don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. In the next video, we're going to learn something else, so do come back tomorrow because there's going to be another awesome video for you to watch. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And let's actually escape and go to the nearby system of Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri and just take a look at what our sun would look like from that system when it is a red dwarf. And so here we are on another planet in Proxima Centauri and there is our sun. It's actually very easy to see, very, very visible, even at a distance of four light year years away from the system. And if I actually fly away from here, I'll, I'll probably be able to see it for quite a while. It might actually be visible even from a farther away distance. And look at that, it disappeared at about 1,000 light years away.